Okay, welcome to another uh, video, another FSX video. We'll be doing uh, the commercial pilot check ride today, which is the last check ride that I have to uh, record. And uh, well, let me jump jump straight into it. <clears throat> Start loading it. Sorry about the background noise. The wife is in the room today, and she's watching TV with our daughter. Anyways, uh, yeah, I I've been having some trouble uh, completing this check ride while recording it. I uh, I did just fine before, but uh, when we're recording, it's much harder for some reason. Let me turn on the uh, real-time weather. It's much nicer to do this with the real-time weather. I'll be using FSXWX. Okay, I see you're ready to I'll demonstrate your commercial piloting skill and obtain that flight simulator commercial license. Since you already read a briefing in the commercial check ride, you know briefing. it's in store for you. So we'll begin our flight by making a short field takeoff, climbing to 800 feet, then configuring the airplane for a normal cruise climb at 120 knots. After takeoff, climb to 5,500 feet and turn right to a heading of 030 degrees. Okay, take off as soon as you are ready. Yeah, so <clears throat> we can just quickly check all flaps are open and the propeller and the mixture are uh, full rich as well, blah blah blah. So all we need to do is full throttle. And take off. Now we have nice headwind. Thankfully. Okay, at 90 knots we want to rotate. We have a positive gear, so ge uh, sorry, positive right? So gear up. Now we climb to 800 feet, and then we configure the aircraft for cruise climb. So, 25 inches of manifold pressure and 2500 RPM. It looks good, so we increase our speed to 120 knots. That looks good as well, but we can start turning right. Okay, that looks good for now. <coughs> so now you have to pay attention to multiple things airspeed, heading. For this examination, you have permission to fly through the Class B airspace at SeaTac Airport. You need not talk to ATC on this flight. All I want you to do is fly the airplane. Okay, as I was saying, airspeed, heading, and uh, make sure you keep the manifold pressure at 25 inches of mercury. And, uh, yeah, that should be it. The manifold pressure uh, keeps decreasing, so you have to pay attention to it. More closely than for the rest of the stuff. When you level out, uh, be careful with the airspeed as well. But I think we're doing fine so far. <coughs> Beautiful Simpsons clouds. <laughs> okay, careful with the manifold pressure. Should be almost at full throttle now. Yeah, pretty much. Which means from now on we should uh, be careful with the mixture.
Okay, we're at full throttle now. So I'm gonna take a sip of my coffee. Hopefully it's uh, not too hot by now. Ah, it's perfect. of the mixture so we're looking at the fuel flow we have to maximize fuel flow okay that should be it when you reach a cruise altitude of 5,500 feet I want you to fly at a power setting of 22 inches of manifold pressure and 2300 rpm and configure the airplane for normal cruise flight Oh, that's nice. We're in the clouds. Okay, we have to level off now. Oh, that will be difficult with the clouds, huh? And uh, so we decrease the uh, manifold pressure first. That was a bit too much. Okay. And uh, now we reduce the RPMs. 2300 okay that looks good we trim a little bit just to keep our altitude uh, you know stable and we close the cowl flaps she never complained about cowl flaps I'm not really sure she's checking it but uh, just to be sure careful with the altitude I hope we have a 100 feet margin I hope for now let me sip a little bit more of my coffee okay now I'd like you to demonstrate a gear down descent to 3,500 feet okay gear down descent so uh, manifold pressure down to 15 inches okay We let the airspeed bleed off. Yeah, right about there. So now we can extend the extend the gear and we start descending in this configuration. your airspeed stable. All we have to do is keep it from uh, passing 152 knots. As we descend we'll have to uh, enrich our mixture. I'll enrich the mixture to full rich. I want you to level the airplane out at 3,500 feet with the gear extended <coughs> and fly at a speed of 140 knots. Yep. So the mixture is full rich. And now we just level out at uh, 3,500, which is 100 feet from now, so we can start raising our nose. And uh, we will need to raise the manifold pressure, or increase the manifold pressure as well, to keep the 140 knots. 
now, now I want you to make a left turn to a heading of 210 degrees. Yeah, now she wants us to turn left, so that's what we do. And, uh, yeah, you'll need a manifold pressure of about 23 to 24 inches of mercury to maintain this altitude and airspeed while turning. Let's raise the gear and begin a normal climb to and level out at 6,500 feet. Okay, raise the gear. We need to increase the RPMs to 2,500. There you go. And we increase the manifold pressure to 25. And we raise our nose to get a speed of 120. There you go. By the way, I'm using Rex 4 for the textures uh, with uh, soft clouds, so uh, if you're wondering why your FSX doesn't look like this, well, you need Rex 4. <laughs> and also the FSXWX, the weather engine, works really well. Uh, I'm also using some Pablo Diaz thing, texture thing which is good for the uh, visibility apparently the uh, weather engine uses it for the visibility okay let's work on the mixture now and get peak fuel flow okay that's about it right there pay attention to our heading as well thousand so 500 feet to go have a look outside <coughs> we're almost there Okay, gonna start leveling off. And uh, decrease manifold pressure to 22. That's it. And the RPMs to 2300. Okay, that's it more or less. And now she's going to tell us to take our GPS, I believe. When 
your airplane is configured for cruise flight and trimmed, I want you to activate the GPS and proceed direct to Harvey Field, identifier S43. Okay, so we forgot to okay, open our Okay, now I'd like you to demonstrate a gear down descent to 3,500 feet. Let's enter this. And she wants a gear down descent. Uh, we forgot to open our call flaps for the uh, climb, so don't forget to do that. mistakes here already huh? okay so we need to let our speed decrease okay that's it and now we descend and we turn at the same time to go to Harvey careful with the airspeed By the way, I uh, pre-ordered <coughs> Dovetails Flight School, and um, yeah, I'll be doing a couple of videos as soon as it comes out, so uh, you can see what it's all about. Not so easy without the horizon to keep your airspeed, huh? I want you to level the airplane out at 3,500 feet with the gear extended and fly at a speed of 140 knots. Right. So, level out now. And we need to maintain a speed of 140 knots. <coughs> so that should be at around 22 inches of mercury. And full pressure. some of my coffee what's uh, happening to the airspeed there I guess it's turbulent here today since you'll be landing at Harvey Field I want you to begin a high-speed descent when you're 15 miles from Harvey Field during the descent, do not let your power increase to more than 22 inches of manifold pressure, nor do I want you to exceed an airspeed of 200 knots. Your objective is to descend to 1,500 feet, which is approximately 500 feet above the traffic pattern altitude at Harvey Field. 
Okay, so uh, we begin the high speed descent now. Raise the gear. Decrease the uh, manifold pressure to 15. And just descend. Let's check the call flaps here. Yeah, they're closed, as they should be. <coughs> Every time you do a power uh, power configuration change, it's a good idea to check the call flaps. And also you should keep an eye on your uh, CHT temperature, which is the uh, cylinder head temperature. Like my daughter is not happy about something. Mm. Let's check our mixture. Yeah, well, should be full rich now. And we're uh, coming up on 1,500 feet, so let's level out. Now we cruise until we get to Harvey. So cruise means 22 inches of mercury. Can enjoy your coffee as well now. a very stable configuration. I don't need any input. I can let go of my hands. Or, do we say that? I can let go of the controls. Maybe that's better. <laughs>
hope we have uh, I hope we don't have strong winds today because uh, yeah, if we have a tailwind it will be very difficult to do this short landing the uh, airstrip that we're going to land to in uh, Harvey is uh, very short Temperature is very low, but the uh, call flaps are already closed, so uh, <coughs> we can't do anything about it. But we're almost there. If uh, we if we maintain this heading, we should see the airfield right up ahead, and I think I see it there already. Make left traffic for runway 14 at Harvey Field. Okay. When you have an idea about how you'll enter the downwind, you can descend to a traffic pattern altitude of 1,000 feet. Configure the airplane for landing and enter the downwind leg for right traffic. I want you to make a short field landing on runway 14 and come to a stop on the runway as soon as possible. Okay, so 15 inches of manifold pressure. Uh, gear down when, you, when your airspeed drops below 154 um, now you should be able to extend one notch of flaps and we should, ah there it is there's the airfield so I'm going to start descending into the uh, traffic pattern I'll maintain or try to maintain 110 knots for now the airfield right there Okay, that's 1,000 feet, that's the uh, traffic pattern altitude here at Harvey. It's generally about 1,000 feet AGL above ground level. So, let's increase our manifold pressure a little bit and we'll start turning to join our left downwind, runway 14. also have full RPMs okay we're now on the left downwind there's our runway we'll maintain the Pattern altitude for now. Okay, I think we can we can start turning for base. And uh, I'll drop the rest of the flaps now, and uh, we can start descending a little bit as well. A little bit, I said. 
<laughs> Good thing about uh, low wing planes is that you can look uh, at what you're turning into. As opposed to a uh, shoulder, shoulder deck, that's how it's called. Uh, where uh, basically when you're turning, you can see you can you can see where you're turning into. So if you're turning left, you can't look left because the wing is covering it. So our uh, gear is down. Yes, let's confirm. Yes, gear down, and um, flaps are down. Everything is looking okay, so let's reduce read this throttle to almost idle here. This airplane, yes, it's very efficient. And uh, we're going. I'm going to try and touch down at 100 knots, more or less. Okay, idle. And let's just uh, touch down, brake. And let's see if we passed. Up until this point. Okay, All right. now taxi to the end of the runway and make a 180 degree turn. Don't worry if you have to taxi into the grass to make the turn. Yes, let's taxi into the when grass. When you are in position for a departure on runway 32, configure the airplane for normal takeoff. When ready, you are cleared to take off on runway 32. Okay, so let's configure the airplane for the takeoff. I'll uh, retract the flaps completely. line up with the runway we should turn our TCAS on now <laughs> just kidding okay here's the runway and so laps off let's see we have uh, propeller max RPMs full rich and we need to open our call call flaps and now we take off, just as we did before. We had a little bit of tailwind, huh? Okay, 90 knots, rotate. Positive right, gear up. And, uh, You're cleared for a normal climb to 6,500 okay. feet and to turn right to a heading of 140 degrees. So that means 25 inches of mercury, more or less. We uh, reduce the uh, RPMs to 2,500 and we can start turning left. So airspeed 120 and we turn left. Sorry, we turn right, heading 140.
Okay. Careful with the manifold pressure. Okay, airspeed heading, it's looking good. Temperature looking good, cough flaps open, blah blah blah. getting ugly. Hopefully we can make it in time. We're almost at full throttle already. Let's turn right to a heading of 280 degrees and continue climbing to 6,500 feet. Yes ma'am. Almost at full throttle. So at some point we need to start start leaning our mixture. And we're at full throttle. Almost above the clouds, but luckily, yeah, the uh, cloud layer layer is at 5,000 feet, more or less. So uh, that should be plenty for us to land, or for us to be able to land safely. Let's check the mixture. So we want fuel max fuel flow, which is here. Thousands. <clears throat> Get ready. We're about to lose our engines now. So, 22 inches, hey, yeah, and uh, let's close our cow flaps. And we should lose our engines now, anytime. Luckily, we can see pain fields right below there. We've uh -oh. just experienced a double engine failure. 
Configure the airplane for the best glide, then use your GPS to find Payne Field and make a dead stick landing at that airport. Dead stick landing. So best glide speed is around 100 knots in this airplane. And uh, we have Payne Field right there, so we, yeah. That'll be easy. Or, well, at least we're in the best possible situation when we experience a full engine failure, which is uh, we're right above an international airport with uh, multiple runways. So, should be okay. use our GPS to confirm our situation. So the elevation of Payne Field is is about 600 feet. So I'm gonna say at around 2600 feet we should evaluate our situation and choose a runway. As you can see, we're descending at about mm, 1,000 feet per minute. So, if you're at 5,000 feet and you experience full engine failure, you have about five minutes to decide what you're going to do. Which, uh, you know, when you're in a stressful situation like this, it's uh, uh, less than what it seems. hard to, to look outside like this, so I'm just using the GPS to assess my situation more or less, my position. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and say we turn once or pain field elevation is 606 feet you can land on any runway if you're choosing the wind is calm today at pain field I'm gonna try to just fly ahead and then turn and try to land on this big runway Hopefully I can make it. Thankfully, due to that uh, really crazy situation where uh, an airliner, you probably heard about it, an airliner ran out of fuel, I uh, learned about a very interesting technique when you're too high to land, the forward slip, which basically you apply full rudder to one side and uh and you you turn you turn to the other side and you lose altitude very interesting so right now we're too high but the uh runway is uh looking well decent i think we can uh, try and go for it because Well, we can extend the gear. This shall have us drop, you know, quicker. Definitely. We also have to make this turn. We can always apply flaps as well if we think we're not descending as fast as we should. But, uh... Hmm. Yeah, let's apply some flaps. more flaps 
and I think I'll start doing that technique of forward slip like this you can see it's working we're losing altitude quite fast quite quickly now so I'm applying full rudder to the left unbelievable it works perfectly now we line up and hopefully we can still flare a little bit and not kill ourselves perfect Now that was some good flying. Oh uh, yeah. In fact, it's good enough to make you a flight simulator commercial pilot today. Congratulations. Fantastic. So that's our video for today, the uh, commercial pilot check ride. I hope I hope this this helps. And uh, we talked about a few interesting things. So I used FSXWX for the weather engine, and uh, it works absolutely perfectly. I love it. We uh, talked about. Dovetails Flight School, an up-and-coming, uh, well, it's not really a flight simulator, they're going to release a known flight simulator uh, later, but it's uh, basically, as the name says, a flight school, and I'll be uh, recording a few videos about it as well. And we talked about the technique to drop altitude when you're too high, uh, which was used, it's crazy, but it was used by an airliner to uh, drop or to lose altitude when they ran out of fuel because they confused pounds with kilos and uh, yeah i hope you enjoyed the video uh, if you have any comments suggestions uh, do so below and i hope i'll uh, see you next time so let me just see okay i can uh, type my name in here fantastic that's my name and thanks so much now i'm a certified certified flight simulator commercial pilot fantastic okay guys i'll uh, see you next time have a good one